Hello everyone, welcome back to another Media Composer tutorial. Today we want to talk about how to create subtitles in Avid. We're not going to use the title tool because it's not made for subtitles. We're going to use the subcap tool. It has a lot of advantages over the title tool and I'm going to show you why it is so much better for subtitles. Okay. First of all, we have to create another video track so that we have some space for our subcaps. We can do that by pressing Command Y. We open our effect palette, generator, subcap. And here we can just drag and drop the subcap tool in our second layer. Okay, we deactivate all the other tracks and open the effect editor. If we open the caption text section, we have space to write something. In this case, I've already pre-written my text, so I can just copy and paste it. As soon as I paste it here, or if I write something, you can see it immediately on the screen. And that's already a big difference to the title tool. You don't have to save an extra file, you don't have to wait. You can use it directly in the timeline, you see in real time what's happening. So I think that's pretty useful when dealing with text. Okay, so this is not in a good position at all. So let's take a look at our style options. First of all, the text is too small for me. Okay, that's a bit better. I'm okay with the font for now, but you can change it to whatever you like. I'm going to center align the text. Now I'm gonna open my box appearance. The box here, that's just the black box that you see right here. You can change the color of the box, you can change the opacity to whatever you like. I'm going to change the anchor position to center. I also meant to center the text. Okay, now I'm gonna just put it here on the bottom. You can just drag and drop this little pink icon and place it wherever you like. Here I'm going to change the X position to zero. That way I know for sure that my text is centered. Okay, we're going to change some more things, but first of all I want to add a bit more text. This is where the next sentence starts, so I'm going to add an add edit. You can see only the second part is highlighted of the subcap tool, and I'm going to copy and paste the next part. Okay, the text is pretty much in the right spot now, but it still really doesn't look good at all. And here's a really, really cool thing about the subcap tool. If you change, for example, the size of the text in one section, it automatically changes the size of the text everywhere. So whenever you don't like any aspect of the style of your text anymore, you can just change it in one spot and it's gonna change it in all sections on your video track. And here's a really important thing to know about it. If you go into your global properties up here and you click on synchronize, it's going to show you which feature of the subcap tool is going to be synced within the clip, within the track, or within the whole sequence. So if you would switch everything to sequence, then it wouldn't matter on what track your subcap clip is. If you change the style of one clip, it would change the style of all clips within your sequence. By default, most of it is selected by track. That way, if you have your subcap clips on one track, most of it is syncing within that one track. If you do need different kinds of subtitles, you could just create those on a different video track. Okay, for now I'm gonna leave most of it as is, except for a few sections in the box appearance because I know I'm gonna change those, like the background opacity and the box width. Okay, I'm gonna change my font size back to something that looks all right, like this. Now I'm gonna take a look at how wide my box is. It's obviously not wide enough. So let's change that. What I usually do is I change the extension here to each row as wide as needed. That way the box is never telling me how wide my text is supposed to be. Okay, now I'm gonna turn off the background color of the box and I go up to the outline and change this to basic outline. And here I'm adding some outline weight. Okay, now it should be pretty easy to read everywhere. And this section my text is a little too long so I could either just add a break somewhere here. You can just press enter in your text to add another row. Or if you don't want to have several rows, you can just split your text up. So I'm just gonna get rid of part of the text to make it shorter. There are different methods. We are going to take a look at how to Okay, that works pretty well for me. But again, if for some reason I would decide my text has to be all the way up here, 
I could just change it in one section and it would be changed in all other sections as well. What I also do a lot is I use the subcap tool as a placeholder. So let's add another track here. And let's say there's supposed to be graphic here, but it's not done yet. So I would just move a piece of subcap tool over here. Add my placeholder text, GFX placeholder, for example. Change the font size and everything else I need to. And as you can see, the size of my font over here has not changed because it is on a different track. So even if I would move my subtitles back down here, it would only affect my subtitles on the video track two, but not on the video track three. Another really cool thing is that the subtitles don't create any media files. So if I wanted to send them to another editor, I could just subclip my subcaps, send the bin to another editor, and that person could just open them. They would be online immediately. Nothing would have to be relinked or titles recreated or anything like that. So that's another really nice thing about them. And even better, I can export my subtitles and send them to someone so that person can view and edit them outside of Avid Media Composer. Let's take a look at that. I'm going back into my effect palette and I'm going to open the caption files section. And here I can click on export caption data. I choose my folder and the name of the file and can even decide if I want a STL or TXT file. Click save. I chose a .txt, that way I can just open it. This is how it looks like. If it was a translator, for example, I could now read it, make sure everything is correct and even change and add things. Save the file again. Now I could send the file back to the editor and that person could just open the subcap tool again, go into the caption file section and click on import caption data. Select the file and open it. It looks like nothing has changed because most of it stayed the same. But you can see here are the things I changed in edit. Okay. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoy my content, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.